Hi, it's the 16th of October 2011. I'm Bernie Gobov. I'm in the back garden in Ireland. Look at my dahlias and some news. First, a quick little hat tip to Anya Lawler, the voice of Morning Ireland, who is going silent for a few months as she gets treatment for cancer. Anya, we're thinking of you and hope the best for you. Over to the front page of the Sunday Business Post, private job agencies are making submissions to Joan Burton about jobs and, and, pla and placement opportunities. I know some people behind the scenes that have a lot of proposals, several really key interesting proposals that would help tackle unemployment and maybe remedy deficiencies in the labor market. I'm hoping that that minister actually takes on board those unsolicited proposals. Inside the Sunday Business Post, hey, face we know, John Collison from Limerick. The story is about Stars of Stripe on the March. Dick O'Brien writes a story about how John's doing the business there in Palo Alto. Dressed in a suit. I don't ever think John's ever been in a suit before that I've seen. He shows what it's like in uh, his own office. Casually, re casually remarking that the picture that he was showing is actually a four o'clock shot. Lots of cool stuff happening for startups that take the big leap, go into an area like Silicon Valley where the investors may be easier uh, to, to reach. Nicola Cook says that HP is making a California trip. So HP Ireland is going to take a number of Irish technology companies into Palo Alto in uh, the March time frame to meet venture capitalists and executives in Google, Cisco and Apple. Good move, good thing for people uh, trying to get started there. Inside the FT weekend, some interesting stuff about how these small startups can communicate and, and cut across. Jonathan Moyles has an idea, well he's the fact of life, is that large companies can't really understand why they're spending millions of pounds on Facebook and Twitter not seeing any uptick. The uptick's happening from small companies who have an advantage, Moyles says, because they can create a relationship. And there's lots of interesting stuff happening in the Irish food market food movement for relationships. Inside the entrepreneurs uh, column, Mike Southern writes that, uh, that story called My Business. SMEs is what he's writing about. It's basically saying if you're really going to try to get a hold of an SME and, and sell your stuff to a small business, there's a go-to person that you need to influence. And he has this whole column is basically about the art of the start is actually if you're trying to start selling effectively to SMEs, you need to get a hold of influencers. Inside the rest of the papers, the race for the Irish. If you're an Irish who's been living overseas, you might be following the sudden rise of Sean Gallagher. He's an entrepreneur himself on a walkabout in uh, Bally Hayes County Cabin. I mean, his rise has been really, uh, the Red Sea poll is pointing out, it's like 36, 39% of people, 39% first preferences. I mean, he's the favorite now, according to Patty Power, and Patty Power is hardly wrong. The number two, Michael D. Higgins, and if you follow my um, InsideView.ie, you'll know that I thought Michael would win that election. Nothing to report, Tom McKirk says. He's reporting on this thing called the Keen Report on Mortgage Arrears, ca classic minimalist, spinnable response to a genuine crisis for thousands of people. Right it is. It was announced by Michael Noonan, the finance minister. Bankers played their part in pulling together a report that really doesn't do much for someone who's totally in arrears or really in arrears and facing issues of personal insolvency. Connor Lynch, social media.e cites several things that we use at where I teach at LIT, Limerick Institute Technology, QR codes, quick.com, Audioboo. I use the TypePad app, not the WordPress app on my phones, and location-based services with augmented reality. Good stuff, worth reading. Social media for startups is the column that's carried in the Sunday Business Post. Inside that Sunday Business Post is also a column with Jennifer O'Connell, and she's writing in the off-message column about, thank you, Dora the Explorer. Every two and three year old can speak Spanish, a handful of words in Spanish. Let's give us some primary evidence. Mia, can we count to ten in Spanish? Yes. And the point, all TV can't be bad. Inside the FT Weekend, a paper I'd, I really, really recommend buying this weekend because there's some seriously good stuff in it. Um, I read the entire article that Bill Clinton, the entire Clinton interview, good comments there about the Tea Party, uh, about moon rocks, just like it says, and getting through this crisis. Inside the FT Weekend today, uh, issues, points of view, and points of view about what's it all meme. Sam Leith got a really cool story about memes, pop culture, downfall, uh, John Stewart's stuff, and uh, cats that dance, cats in boxes. Don Caldwell, 
He points out a reporter for the website Know Your Meme says, there's not an easy answer to how something becomes a meme or how it becomes a viral thing. Funny niche, weird niche, cuteness niche. Success of the meme is like reproductive success of an organism. Really good article. We'll have it, I'll have it in my media writing course module I teach. And I'm going to put it in the PR module as well. Because a lot of people get through the program without knowing what's it all mean. And what's it all mean about the economy's prospects? Company clues to the economy's prospects. Allison Smith has a story. You can find it at ft.com forward slash companies. It looks at things like power. It's happening in the power market, sharp downturn markets. Sharp downturns may indicate um, reduction in, in production and uh, manufacturing. In terms of media, if you don't have no money to advertise, it probably means people aren't buying the footfalls down. And then what's happening in big companies that involve manufacturing in the Mittelstand in Germany, you know, there's some companies that are going to go on a big non-productive day, non-production day, lay, um, not layoffs, but just longer holidays. It's happening in our... In, um, German manufacturing industry for cars. So individual reports, everything's going, everything's headed down if you look at the, the trend lines. It's not so good for the global economy. What is good are apps for children, the next big thing, maybe, but maybe not. Maya Palmer looks into the preschool age kids who use smartphones faster than they can tie shoelaces. Harper Collins says they have 25, 30 apps available for children, but you know, a lot of places aren't putting money, a lot of companies aren't putting money into the apps, because it could be 5,000 to 10,000 euro to build an app, and you have a, you have a brand like the Gruffalo, you'd wonder, well, Jesus, is it worth doing that without cannibalizing the brand you already have? Well, speaking for my four-year-old, apps are the business. She wishes she had more of them. And before I leave the Financial Times, can't forget it's freeze week next week, art goes into overdrive annual art frenzy in London. I mean, if you really, if you like art, technology, and ec ec economics, this week's FT is really worth buying. And I really like what I've seen inside the freeze, especially promoting art from promoting it through digital and using clever technologies in the digital economy. The internet's changed a lot of things the way art's being distributed. That's some message we're trying to teach in the Creative Multimedia course where I I'm, I'm a lecturer. Inside the Sunday Times, I won't even go into the slurs that are out there about Dana, one of the presidential candidates. She's below 5% now, first preference. Gallagher surging ahead, front page news from Tom Lyons and Stephen O'Brien. He's seen the Red Sea poll that's pointing out that surge in a previous minute here in my back garden where it's windy. Inside the Sunday Times, hey, Ireland is smiling. The Irish are smiling through gloom, doom and gloom out there, but According to an OECD report, Colin Coyle says, How's life discovered Irish have an overall life satisfaction rate of 7.3? That's higher than average across the EU. Government jet may still continue flying, says Richard Oakley. Look, if you're going to hold the EU presidency, you need a jet like that if you live on an island. I don't know. I'm biased because I'm a, I'm a pilot myself, and I think people make much ado about nothing. Hey, here's a book that's also important. Matt Cooper, How Ireland Really Went Bust. Points out some stuff that would have affected Brian Cowan's sanity, as well as his ability to run a government. He's long gone, not even in the, not even available for an interview. Stuff I've highlighted here: Irish situation is more like a loaded gun. Tim Geithner, the U.S. government secretary, secretary of the Treasury, took a strong stand, wanted the ease IMF in there, and he pushed around the weight of the United States. Cowan caved, didn't tell the ministers what was exactly happening, and a lot of people didn't run for re-election because of that distrust. Banks should shoulder some of the homes debt pain, says the Sunday Times lead editorial. Yes, it should. There's personal insolvency out there. Right across the page, Matt Cooper points out the growing number of people can't take any more pain. Translated, I mean, you're actually talking suicidal there. People don't get that. Uh, it is going to happen. There are going to be some tragic things occurring. Maybe on the road. No, re not really. Here's a piece of tech from the Sunday Times. BMW's dynamic light spot system using an infrared camera generating images. So look, there you are. The beam can illuminate people 318 feet away, follow their movements. It'll beam inside the BMW's grill. I'd like to see that running on all cars, picking up people that don't wear, wear reflective vests. Not my man, Liam, the bicyclist who's done his painting tour. Favorite way to relax. I love it. I've seen him do this in an Irish kitchen listening to people talk and cycling gets you across Ireland at the right speed. Along the way you could actually smell the flowers. I'm telling you, you can. In our back garden, we have dahlias coming up. <laughs>
<laughs> they're very confused. We're going to have to do something about this back garden. We're listening to Peter Donigan and Brian Green on the Sideshow tell us wh how, what to do. And I like his suggestion about tires. The Sideshow. It'll grow on you. Join gardener Peter Donigan and not-so-green fingers Brian Green on Dublin City FM. Fridays, 3 p.m. The Sod Show. It'll grow on you. The Sod Show. Friday, 3 p.m. Dublin City FM. Growing things in old tractor tyres. I think the point of growing it in tractor tyres is it's very good for people who grow potatoes because there is a, a layering or a mounding of, of soil around the potatoes to try and get more out of it. So it works quite well. Trial one. And if it works out, go back to the tyre shop and ask them for another one. We've got some tyres in our car that aren't matched. One of those tyres are going to take off and put in this back garden, fill it up with compost and watch magic happen when covered with polyethylene in the, sun, in the winter. It's Bernie Goldbach. You want to watch the experience? Check me out on Flickr.com, stroke photos, stroke, stroke Irish eyes. You can see the garden in the winter months. Check me out online at Top Gold or follow me on audioboo.fm. Top Gold, like you might be doing now. Thanks a million for listening. Happy sunny Sunday. Bye for now. <laughs>